Hey team, today we'll talk about how to become more industrious, ambitious, and goal-oriented. Now, I've found that the ENTJ personality type, the extroverted, intuitive thinking and judging type, is one of the most industrious and ambitious of all the 16 personality types. Now, I want to talk about what it is that makes an ENTJ so successful compared to other intuitive types, and what, why ENTJs are so much better at applying their creativity than the other types. So, I've studied personality psychology for about 10 years now, and I've come to discover that the ENTJs are some of the most successful personality types in a traditional sense. Now, today we will talk about what you can learn from the ENTJ personality type and what you should avoid. Why should you want to be like an ENTJ? I believe that everyone and all personality types can benefit from studying the ENTJ personality type and the mindset of this personality type in particular. It can be incredibly important if you are looking for success in business, entrepreneurship, or education, or academics. Now, what I've found to be the key values of the ENTJ personality type are creativity, exploration, reformation, and leadership. I will show you how these values can benefit you and why these values are so important in your life and in your happiness in life. So I believe that the ENTJ is a very admirable personality type. Contrary to sometimes negative stereotypes, I believe the ENTJ is incredibly talented at creating big success and that ENTJs can be highly selfless in putting together or bringing forward innovation and success that other people can find happiness through. So, the ENTJ cognitive function in a flow state is extroverted thinking. So when the ENTJ is at their best, this is what you're going to see the most in the ENTJ. This also means, you know, the, one of the most underrated traits of the ENTJ, that's novelty seeking. I believe there is no personality type who spends more time learning and consuming practical knowledge. I see ENTJs reading up on all the latest ideas, all the latest innovations, all the latest success strategies. I think no type reads more nonfiction than the ENTJ. The ENTJ personality type values advanced learning, high-end learning front-end learning. They want to learn about the latest findings, latest discoveries, latest news, latest innovations. So a lot of the time you will find ENTJs to be some of the most well-educated personnel types. To the ENTJ, knowledge is a resource. So if you want to compete with an ENTJ, you got to study as hard as you work. Now, if you want to compete with an ENTJ, you need to do the following. First, Dedicate yourself to learning and reading about new things. Second, set goals in your learning and track your progress learning about new topics. How far have I gotten? What page am I on? What more do I need to learn? What alternative sources could I look into? Uh, what the, how do I understand this idea? How can I apply this idea? Third, learn to use knowledge as a resource to fast track your success. And that means really think about, okay, what can I do with these discoveries? What can I do with this knowledge? How can I apply that in my business or in my projects or in my ideas? The last part I believe is the most important. You should not just seek to learn new things, but you should constantly think about how you can apply your knowledge to make smarter decisions. Extroverted thinking is not just about advancing your skills, it is also about putting your skills to the practice. And as an extroverted thinking type, they can be pragmatic in thinking about how to use knowledge and information to their advantage. And you should consider that as well. So what can you do to be more like an ENTJ? Well, first I would say learn to filter between good and bad ideas. ENTJs are one of the intuitives that are best at ruling out stupid or impossible possibilities. That means an ENTJ can dedicate themselves to ideas that have actual potential. ENTJs can quickly see this idea is preferable to that idea, this step is smarter than that one. And that is usually why ENTJs are also some of the least intuitive intuitives. ENTJs apply only the intuition that they believe will be successful to them in their life. And at most, crazy ideas for them are just about play and having fun. As an ENTJ, or if you want to be more like an ENTJ, I would say make a note of what resources or skills you are going to need if you want to successfully implement an idea. And this is true, the more crazy your idea it is. So 
if you have a crazy idea, don't start with, let's get down to business. Let's make it happen. Start with, what do I need to make this happen? What do I need to learn? Because a lot of time, if you have a crazy idea, it's often in a field you don't know a, much, a lot about. So you need to study the field. You need to study the people in the field. You need to look at what other people are doing. You need to check if somebody else has had this idea or a similar idea. You really need to look at basically, what do I need? What do I need to do? How much time do I need to finish it? Uh, do I need money? Do I need capital? Do I need to go anywhere? Do I need to talk to somebody? Do I need help? Is there somebody else that is working on this that I could work together with? Is there, um, uh, do I have friends that might be interested in helping me out with this? Just learn to use resources to make things happen. Don't just come at something from scratch like a beginner because your idea is going to fail if you are not prepared. I would also say make use of social networks and confidently charm other people to join you. If you have a crazy idea, the best thing to do is probably to talk to other people about it and to talk about it with confidence. I see so many people say, oh, I have this stupid idea. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, you're probably boring. You probably won't care about it. When an ENTJ talks about their ideas, they talk about it like it's the thing, the most important thing. It's going to save the world. It's going to change everything. It's going to be so big. It's going to make so much money. You know, when an ENTJ talks about ideas, they really create enthusiasm for their ideas because they are good at using enthusiasm and passion and logic to really get people on board. And you need to think about that too. Learn to be interested and respectful towards your own ideas. If you have an idea, you shouldn't be beating down on it. You should be treating it like it's your child. You should be saying, uh, you should be talking about how proud you are of it. You should be basically putting it in the best school. You should be basically uh, thinking about what you, where you wanted to go. You should be dressing it up so it looks the best possible for everyone else. I would also say constantly learn new skills. Never stop learning. Never stop uh, getting knowledge. A lot of people out there have ideas, but the way you can get an edge is be being basically the most well-read, most studied, most skillful person in the field in applying that idea. What's going to give you an edge is not just having an idea, but it is having the skills necessary to execute it. And being the most skilled person will make you better at executing your idea. I would also say don't back down even if you encounter resistance. So people are going to question you. People are going to challenge you. People are going to obstacles are going to come up you're going to you're going to struggle with lack of time you're going to struggle with lack of resources you're going to struggle with lack of money or finances now what separates an entj from other types is just that they will not back down so they will make it happen whatever compromises need to be done whatever priorities need to be set they're going to prioritize their ideas because that is the most important thing to them i would also say back up your ideas with good credentials. Don't just be the one of the madmen who speak crazily about something really abstract, but also be somebody people know and people respect. So learn to know that if people respect you, they will respect your ideas. If people don't respect you, they're not going to respect your ideas. What that means is get good credentials, get the academic background, get the right certificates, right? get the right uh, history get the right career or field experience you know whatever will put you in a position where people look at you and go wow he's well read he's well educated he has done a lot of good he has an impressive resume he has really uh, done amazing things he's gonna be good at this idea he's gonna make it happen uh, and then it leads up to be known as the best in your field eventually that's the goal you should aim for people should think of you as the number one most well-read most respected most successful most intelligent person in your area of expertise. Finally, I would say get proof to verify your talents and abilities because you can have like an idea that you know something, you can uh, have a basic grasp of something, but if you don't have the proof or credentials behind it, that's gonna be an issue for you. That means do something with your ideas to show that they work. Just run a test, run an experiment, and uh, do it in a proper objective setting so that it uh, will be taken seriously. That means uh, put yourself in a situation where you can prove that your ideas really work, or at least that the base concept of it works. It's gonna help get people in on your idea earlier. 
Finally, let's talk about what you can do better than an ENTJ can and what you don't want to do from what an ENTJ does. So number one, I think ENTJs, they can struggle to be vulnerable with other people. And I know a lot of ENTJs will say, hey, I don't struggle with anything. I'm great at everything. But that's also the problem. Vulnerability is talking about weaknesses, issues, problems, emotional struggles. So it is admitting to fault and issue and blame and saying I did something wrong and I will do better. And um, Whatever type you are, if you are an ENTJ or if you're somebody interested in or inspired by ENTJs, don't fall into that trap into thinking that being invulnerable is a good thing because being invulnerable is fake. And it is true that a fake painting is worse than an authentic one. So if you can be an authentic painting, if you can be real in your struggles and in your issues and in your hardships, and if you can be honest about it, you're going to be a better leader than if you're going to act like you're perfect and amazing at everything. Second, I would say ENTJs, they have a bad habit of intellectualizing their feelings. So a lot of time that means they will rationalize whatever decision they make to be the right one. And they will always uh, talk about it like it is something logical and perfect. And uh, a lot of time this will distract from the feeling itself. So don't uh, score your feelings. Don't put a, a number of one to 10 on it. Don't uh, uh, try to make it fit in an objective system because it will distort from what the feeling really is. And it will uh, cause a lot of misunderstandings because people don't communicate emotions like that. And they won't understand you communicating your emotions like that. Third, I would say ENTJs will sometimes dismiss good ideas because they sound irrational or unfeasible. Some of the ideas that an ENTJ will dismiss have potential. It's just that the ENTJ wants things to happen too fast or that the ENTJ uh, is too logical or too rational about it and that they miss the fact that that idea could be really amazing and that idea could really work and that idea has a lot of potential. And so as an ETJ, don't rush your ideas and uh, as any other type, really, if you have an idea and you care about it and it's an important idea to you, uh, don't give up too easily and don't dismiss it too fast. I would also say ENTJs have a problem of feeling like they are at war with the world, like everyone is against me, everyone is in the way, nobody has the skills, nobody is smart enough, nobody is talented enough to help me, nobody is good enough to meet up to my expectations, you know, that uh, everyone is getting in my way, people are being stupid, people are stopping me from thriving and being successful. And uh, that mentality is... Uh, a problem because you need to be able to work with your environment to get things done and work with what you got. So you have to be respectful to where people are at and the people around you are, and you have to accept what's going on in your life. Because if you can't accept what's going on around you, you can't experience what's going on around you and you're going to be blocked from getting forward in life. I would also say ENTJs can sometimes provoke resistance that they could easily overcome with diplomacy. So sometimes ENTJs will create their own enemies and obstacles. I think maybe because they're bored or maybe because they, they I don't know what it comes down to. Uh, but ENTJs will sometimes look for enemies and problems where there aren't any. And you shouldn't uh, open doors you're not uh, prepared to face. And sometimes that will distract you from moving forward. If you get caught up in petty conflicts, you're going to be distracted from being successful and getting forward in life. I also see that the tribe often has a habit of shaming the ENTJ for ignoring moral or ethical considerations or for being too honest. This often comes from misunderstanding the ENTJ or for the ENTJ making themselves misunderstood. Uh, so make sure that people know you and where you're coming from and uh, that you can be honest and raw in what failures you have, what shortcomings you have, uh, because it's going to help people understand you and see your point of view. I would also say ENTJs can sometimes be attracted to extreme or sometimes unethical beliefs just because they are efficient or simple. So as an ENTJ, don't uh, too quickly uh, jump on an idea just because it's the easiest way or the cheapest way or the simplest way. Some things are worth their money and some things are worth the loss. So especially ethics and especially moral considerations are worth the time and effort and patience. And if you should be patient with anything, it is with people. Finally, I think ENTJs might 
break things because they are too much in a rush. And most importantly, while ENTJs are the most successful, I think ENTJs really struggle to check in with themselves and to be happy with their own success. There can be a feeling like it's never enough, like you have to push faster, harder, stronger. You have to be more productive, more efficient, learn more, you know, and it can be always sometimes like you're uh, speeding up the carousel to a speed where you really cannot experience or enjoy it for what it is. And that's a problem. Anyways, there are so many amazing things to learn about the ENTJ and the ENTJ is such an interesting type and everyone should be looking at and learning from the ENTJ, especially when it comes to success in careers and in work. And we all need success in careers and work. We all need to have some kind of thing that we are good at. We all need to develop and find our own skill or ability. We all need to find confidence in ourselves and the ENTJ can really help with this. I hope you enjoy this video and if you have any comments or experiences with ENTJ or if you are learning about this let me know in the comments down below thanks for watching and see you all in the next video